So I'd now like to introduce uh, the, uh, Dr. Anthony Lynham. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce someone who certainly needs no uh, introduction on this campus. Um, Dr. Anthony Lynham, um, the Honourable Anthony Lynham, the Minister of uh, Queensland Minister of State Development and Minister for Natural Resources and Mines. He's well known for his work in maxo, maxillo palatial surgery, for his tireless campaign to prevent violence in our community. And as a senior doctor, he worked and conducted research at both the Prince Charles Hospital and here at the RW Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Very pleased to welcome him back to today. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Dr. Anthony Lynham. It's certainly great to be back. Um, but uh, as we stand on footsteps a millennia old, I would like to take this opportunity to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we gather today and pay due respect to their elders past and present. Um, I will admit that it's great to be here. I certainly need the CPD points at the present time. <laughs> and the other thing, I think I scored the best park I've ever scored at the Royal Brisbane Women's Hospital today. <laughs> it was just right outside. I wish that happened every day rather than scouting around the car park looking for a park. Um, and also the other thing, I, 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 I couldn't help but see the change in my direction in that uh, every time I, I, I spoke at a medical conference, which was, as we all do, it's considerable, there's always the PowerPoint behind us. And in politics, there was no PowerPoint. That's up until I got there, because I give political speeches now with a raging PowerPoint behind me. So when they get bored with the political speech, the PowerPoint's flickering away behind. So that, that takes a bit of boredom away from the speeches. But I'd also, look, I, I sincerely like to acknowledge Professor Alistair McEwen today, and also Professor Jason uh, Roberts, representatives from government and industry, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you so much for inviting me to the official launch for the Centre for Research Excellence in redefining antimicrobial use to reduce resistance. There's no doubt that this is a very, very important issue and this is a very, very important initiative. Unfortunately, the Minister for Health and Ambulance Services, Cameron Dick, was unable to be here today but I can assure you I'm extremely pleased to be here to represent him. Uh, I do have a vast interest, obviously, in medicine and surgery, but I also have a specific interest in research. And uh, I'm still, I still hold my academic titles here as an associate professor at the University of Queensland Medical School, very proud of that, and also hold a similar title at, the, at uh, QUT with bio, the uh, School of Biomedical Sciences, which is my research at Prince Charles Hospital. And I still continue with my research. It is tapering a bit, but even last night, I had a research meeting uh, over the phone last night, so uh, just finalising one, one further paper for publication. So it's a busy life. And the opening of this Centre of Excellence represents another milestone in Australia's proud history at the cutting edge of antimicrobial discovery, research and innovation. Its mission is crucial to confronting an extremely serious healthcare danger. And I think that the population at large knows that unless something is done, unless something is done seriously, we are going to be in a crisis in the future. Because we live in a world facing multiple serious threats and antimicrobial resistance represents a danger that should be added to this list. While the current costs attributable to antimicrobial resistance do not represent a sizeable burden of the global economy, it can be difficult to instil a real sense of urgency to address this problem. It's the estimated future costs that are the concern. And the burden and the potential for these costs is huge. Now, the antimicrobial drugs, I think we all know it, do not represent a panacea for all infections. The bugs they are supposed to attack are becoming increasingly resistant. Survival of the fittest means the most resistant organisms are surviving. In Europe, drug-resistant bacteria are responsible for 25,000 deaths every year. Some estimates suggest that as many as 10 million people a year could die from antibiotic-resistant bacteria by 2050 if new treatments are not found. Now, meeting this threat is a race between drug development and microorganism evolution. The scientific challenge is matched by a financial challenge of up to $1 billion to bring a new drug to market. That's a lot of money. 
There have been no new classes of antibacterial drugs developed since 1987. And every night I listen to the BBC radio, have done for years. I love listening to the BBC. And last night, and I adjusted the speech and read the speech, and last night I was listening to the BBC while I was doing that. There was an article about a German researcher who had found a new uh, antibacterial class of drugs. And uh, it's very early days, but that's one little thing. And that, that's as I was preparing this paper. And on the, on the BBC radio, they mentioned the same thing. Not since 1987 have we seen a new class of antimicrobial drugs. And pharmaceutical companies, yeah, the, the world we live in is they concentrate on the high profits, you know, the anti-cholesterol drugs. That's where they're going for they're not going for the antimicrobial drugs. So we need governments, we need initiatives from governments to promote development through institutions like this, to promote the development of this new class of drugs that we sorely need. And unless we have this attack on these organisms, we're back to the 1940s. We're back where you know, a strep throat or a scratched knee can kill. Now, if we're back to those days, you can imagine that, you know, we can no longer do hip replacements, no more knee replacements. Uh, in my field, no more reconstructive surgery. Um, and also, you couldn't have chemotherapy. It would be just too dangerous to have chemotherapy. So we need a global, multifaceted, evidence-driven, coordinated response. In May 2014, the World Health Assembly adopted a resolution to develop a global action plan on antimicrobial resistance. The Australian Government has been an active participant in this plan and Australia has developed a national antimicrobial resistance strategy. But it's this centre and this centre represents an important initiative in the implementation of that strategy. Now, Queensland Health has a strong commitment to a robust, effective antimicrobial stewardship program to optimise the use of antimicrobials. It's, we're trying, through our health system, to reduce the inappropriate antimicrobial use to improve patient outcomes. The programs are multidisciplinary, using the expertise and resources of infectious disease physicians, clinical microbiologists and pharmacists. Along with these programs, I understand the centre will lead clinicians and researchers from more than 10 countries. And I witnessed that on your slide before, Jason. It's, a, it's an amazing collaborative effort. And all designed to reduce uh, and address antimicrobial resistance. I very much look forward to seeing the collaborations that we will lead and also uh, and uh, look forward to seeing the results of this program and uh, the one thing, I'm sure the people out there don't know it already, but the mums and dads of Queensland will be really looking forward to seeing what comes out of this program. Thanks so much for your initiative and thanks for having me here today.